please stand as you are able and turn to page 518 in the blue hymnal. We will sing Christ is made the sure foundation verses 1, 3, and 4. Welcome to St. Nicholas on this fifth Sunday of Easter. We're delighted that you're here with us. Our service begins in the white bulletin with the opening acclamation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praying together the colic for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray the collect and prayer for this Sunday found in your yellow insert. Praying together. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said. I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 31, prayed responsibly by whole verse. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me and make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness, save me. The first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And, a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall, and stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May God, may the Holy Spirit empower us to live in light of the Gospel declaring its truth with our words and embodying this truth through our actions. Give us love for you and love for one another. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please be seated. This passage has been described as the best and most comforting sermon that Jesus delivered. These verses become the foundation for comfort, not only for these disciples, but also for us. Here in this chapter of John, Jesus anticipates the sorrow of the already breaking hearts of his disciples. And he gives them comfort upon comfort. As we read Jesus' words in the first six verses, we discover how deeply he cared for his disciples. He was about to be nailed to the cross and he knew full well that he would soon bear the sins of all who would ever believe. He will be cursed with the curse of God, be forsaken by his own father, and be spit on and mocked by evil men. Any other man in that situation would have been in such a state of uncontrollable agitation that he would never have been able to focus his attention on the needs of others. But the name of Jesus is different. 
Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. But where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. If there is a single message in Jesus's words, it's that the basis of comfort is trust, faith. If we're discontent, worried, anxious, bewildered, confused, if we're in need of comfort, the reason is that we don't trust him enough. We don't trust him like we should. And if we really trust Christ, what do we have to worry about? <clears throat> the reason the disciples were so stirred up is that they had begun to focus on their problems and they didn't seem to be able to put their trust in Christ. So in these verses, he reminds them of the importance of trusting him. But if you have ever lost a loved one, you know what this kind of permanent separation is like. But this reading is not only about death. And I, I can attest to that. Based on my experience, as I left my children behind to come to this country. I know I have to find them all so they can have more. And it was the most difficult decision I have ever made. Imagine having to tell your little kids that you will be leaving them for a while, not knowing when you will see them again. It is painful, it was painful, and it hurt. I left my little island and I left them behind so that I can come and prepare a place for them here in this country so that I can get them here so that they can go to college, so that they can grow into the people that they are today. And I thank God every day because as I look back, I saw where he walked with me and stayed with me. I call them every day. It cost me a whole lot of money, <laughs> but I didn't care. I had to hear those little voices. And I thank God. And up to today, I thank God for the people who he put in my path that helped me to get to a place where it was possible to get them here. It took four years of separation, four very difficult years. But as I look back, I saw God moving with me every step I took. And my parting words to my children were, I am going away so that I can send for you. And as I struggled, I knew I had to trust him and have faith that everything will work out and I will get my children here with me. 
and God answered my prayer. When I went to the airport on that day to pick them up, imagine the joy and the love as I watched them come off the plane. God is so good. Trust in him doesn't mean that we don't have to repent or that he will spare us from sorrow and pain. But in trust, we can allow him to face up to the most difficult situations we find ourselves in. We realize that in times we felt most lost and alone or caught in the ways of being ourselves that we lost least proud of, that he has been with us all along. Some of the hard moments of grief, disappointment, regret, and how we got through them, what we learned from those difficult times. The one who was with us then is still with us. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus. He has been with us all this time. And he's not about to leave us now. Here is Jesus Christ. Fully divine, totally human, anticipating the most horrible kind of experience, yet completely unconcerned at this point about his own experience, but wholly absorbed in the needs of his 11 friends, surely already feeling the weight, the awful load of sin that he was about to bear, realizing that he was about to taste the bitter cup of death for us sinners. He nevertheless took a primary interest in the sorrows and affairs of his disciples. And as John wrote in chapter 13, verse one, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. And as I wrote this, I thought of the song. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. But even knowing all of that, Jesus talks about his dying. What are these disciples to do? They had forsaken all and followed him. They left everything behind. And now he was going to forsake them. Not only that, he was going to leave them in the midst of enemies who hated him and who hated them. Nothing seemed to fit. They had been informed by the Lord himself that one of their own group would be the instrument of betrayal and even that Peter, who was on the surface, the strongest of all of them, would deny him three times that very night. Everything seemed to be coming to an unbelievable climax. But even as they were wavering, their love for him was undiminished. Perhaps in the midst of their affairs, they were hoping against hope that he would do something to reverse what must have seemed to them like an impossible situation. 
Jesus, who could read their hearts like a billboard, knew exactly what they were thinking. He was touched with the feelings of their infirmities. And in a sense, he shared their sorrows and their hurts. They couldn't feel his pain, but he could feel theirs. So he promises them, in my father's house and many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Can you imagine how it must have comforted, comforted them to realize for the first time, for the first time, why he was leaving? He wasn't just going to get away from them. He was going to get things ready for them. <clears throat> it is important to note that as he refers to heaven as my father's house, and his favorite name for, my, for God was my father. We hear him say that over and over as we read the gospels. Now he would be glorified by death. And he was going back to full glory, the father in his father's house. I remember the first time going back home after I received my green card. <laughs> and what a great day that was. So I suppose I had to get ready to go back home. To go home to a place where I was welcomed, where I was loved, where I was accepted. I was free to be myself. I got to see all my friends and family who I hadn't seen for over four years. And what a pleasure, what a joy, and what love there was. The relationships that I'd left behind were still there. This is what Jesus is talking about in this passage, relationships. Not just in the far off future of eternity, but in the very immediate reality of the present. He reminds the disciples that through him, they are already connected to God the Father. They have begun an intimate relationship with the divine host through Christ. They have laughed with God, dined with God, walked with God. They have witnessed God's incredible powers to heal and reach out into the world. They have experienced God, not as some future being to meet, but as someone who is a part of their lives, even now. Today, we are challenged to consider what our relationship with God is like. Remember to pray more. We remember to pray more when there is something we want or need. We come to church looking for what we can get out of our time here. Ready to be served and hoping not to be disappointed by the sermon we hear. We think about God when it is convenient for us, which might be less often than, we, than we'd like to admit. But that's not where our relationship with God should end. The invitation to us has already been made some 2,000 years ago and will extend into eternity, but we don't have to wait to accept it. We can live as God's guests now dwelling with Christ in us today. The Father's house can be wherever we are. 
The light is always on us for us to come and stay. As the psalmist reminds us, this is a good and joyful place to be. So come and stay a while. There's a place prepared for us. Let us go to the house of the Lord. The disciples were to see the worst things imaginable, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. But yet, Jesus assures them, let not your heart be troubled. In our difficulties from day to day, let not our hearts be troubled, but have faith in Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. And turning to page three in your service leaflet, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Virgin Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion in those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Pray for those who have died of the violence and that you would bring an end to this destruction. Thanksgiving for Izzy's healing. Pray for Anne, Margaret Valentine's mother. John. All those who are on our prayer list.
Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not and in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And Lord, and so with you. Just you. Praise the Lord. And we can ask the readers to receive the gift. Not today, though. Peace the Lord. Peace the Lord. See, I get on the choir this way. Peace the Lord. Peace the Lord. God's just the way you God's peace be with you. Yes, very beautiful. And I was in those beautiful islands in all the Caribbean. Of course, I live there. But it's a black and white. I am. I am. I don't know. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. He's just. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. God's peace. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
Please stand as you are able for the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer B found on page five of your service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Nicholas and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them and remember that Christ died and lives for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
coming up here because I don't want to burn my hair. Ready? <laughs> we doing a circle? Sure. <laughs> We're doing a circle. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 <coughs> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Where's he going? You want two? Is that why? You're <laughs> One is enough. One is enough, but if we have any leftover, maybe. It's the body of Christ. I know, it's so much better than Lent when we had those yucky wafers. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Yellow fingernails. The blessing of God, the Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. You'll get it soon. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Because Dan Dan's been baptized. Remember? Go in peace. Isn't that easy? Oh. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. We'll just wait till people gather. Hang on on that side. We gotta have this side come forward. It's we haven't done this for like three or four years. I don't know. It feels like an eternity, but yeah, half and half. And scooters that are beautiful. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
please stand as you are able for the prayers after communion. I will offer the first prayer for those who are joining us for spiritual communion. Let us pray. Beloved Jesus, we believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. We love you above all things and desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this moment receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you and unite ourselves entirely to you. Let us never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen. Amen. Praying together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always accepted you, and is with you all of the time. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. ago today for my first Sunday at St. Nick's. It literally was May 7th. Isn't that weird? Yeah. So, um, congratulations. We've survived a lot together. Yeah. For those of you who, yeah, there's, and how many of you are new since seven years ago? Yeah. Excellent. We're glad you're here. I have to say, I think we've had a lot of fun together in seven years. We've also had a number of really serious challenges together, COVID being like the longest lasting thing forever that we've had to deal with. Um, but for those of you who weren't here about what, four months, five months after my first Sunday in September, I don't know how many months that is, 
I had a brain bleed and was gone for a month. So uh, Mindy was the senior warden and had to figure out what to do when um, Barbara, Barbara, tag you're in. Anyway, um, yeah, and, and so we've we've had a, an amazing journey together and I am just so excited to begin my seventh year with you. There is that thing called the seven year itch. Don't worry, I'm not feeling it. Not feeling it. We're married, we're together. We're gonna stay together as long as we can. But now that it's not about me, um, let me tell you that we have a sign up sheet in the back. We're going to be having something that's really focused more about Pentecost, but it's gonna be the week before. Cause this year on Pentecost, which is when, you know, everybody speaks in their own languages and everybody understands it. And we all come together as the body of Christ from all different lands and nations and, and races. Well, this year, Pentecost is on Memorial Day weekend. And I know that the church doesn't want to move it, but we're going to move. We're not moving Pentecost, but we're moving our um, international brunch, which is a first, to the Sunday before. So it's going to be on May 21st. There's a sign-up sheet on the back door. We are also going to put a sign-up genius in with the email that's going to go out tomorrow, as well as the one that goes out Thursday. So that the idea is we will come together after church. We will be together. We'll stay together after church. And we will share a fellowship and hopefully dishes from our land of origin, whether it's a country or a, a location or a family of origin. So let's say um, I'm Pennsylvania Dutch, although I'm bringing Kugel, which is Jewish, but um, I, you know, pork and sauerkraut just is not something I enjoy. So um, anyway, uh, but you know, we're thinking of having some wonderful things from the islands, um, things from Germany, things from Scotland, maybe, although I doubt you'll be here, darn it. Um, Lebanese food, we're going to do this again, because uh, it's all about the food. Um, and getting to know one another a little bit better, because as you saw, a number of us haven't been here for a long length of time. So we're going to get to know one another a little bit better. Um, somebody's phone's ringing. Um, and then, um, so sign up for that. We hope we'll have a good turnout. Um, we are hopefully going to be putting solar panels on our roof. I should stop making that announcement because we don't really know when that's going to happen. But we are going solar. It's a beautiful day. Why don't Steve, you come up and talk about the garden. <laughs> and then I have one more thing to talk about. Brought me gardening uh, there is gardening at today after church. Uh, it'll be probably fairly brief. Um, mostly weeding. I wanted to thank the McCartans, though, and the grandkids for their beautiful gift of plants, which will be going in today. If anybody else wants to bring anything for the garden, right now what we mostly need are soils, fertilizers, and a few more plants, perhaps. Um, I can't think of anything else. John? Uh, flowers? Uh, yeah, edible flowers would be great, actually. Nasturtiums, pansies, things like that would be wonderful. We could add those in. Uh, otherwise, it'll be a brief day if you'd like to join us. It's a beautiful day right now. It's going to rain later. So come on out. Do we need, are the plants already out in the garden? They're sitting out there on the okay. top. Of the we'll We're going to bless them from oh, afar. Thanks, Sally. Uh, Deacon Sally awesome. and her husband for the gift of straw, which oh, was wow. brought in. We'll yes, in fact, uh, there's some, we will need to buy some wood from um, Lowe's to complete. <laughs> The lows would be great, or the missions from the garden and put in the collection table. So just a reminder, if you want to give gifts of money rather than gifts of plants or flowers, you can write a check out to St. Nick's or Venmo it, and you'll see the, um, if you go to our website, you'll see at the very top how you Venmo to us. Um, it's not Venmo, it's something else. I'm sorry, I don't know. But you can text it to us. I'm trying to be smart. It's on Realm, yes. Um, and just make sure you put garden in the memo line so we'll know how to, you know, designate the, the funds. Um, one last thing before we fellowship together, S Sandra gave a wonderful sermon about um, in my house are many mansions, I go to prepare a place for you. Without knowing her sermon today, I picked this card for our conversation at fellowship hour. And the, the question is, and you can share among yourselves, when did you first come to believe in God? And quickly share a story of how you came to faith. So. That is the question for today. When did you first come to believe in God? And with that, I'm going to ask our deacon, Sandra, to dismiss us with your blessing to fellowship hour and time together. And please sign up for the 
International Brunch. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.